This tutorial is divided into two parts. Part 1 is about the basic knowledge in Photoshop Elements. Part 2 is the practice itself. Hello and welcome to my tutorial. I'm Martin W. Laos. A color cast is simply a disturbing and unwanted color in a photo. Here's an old slide that has a very strong color cast, an orange one. I scanned the image and I got that. This slide for me is like looking through some sort of opaque, thick orange sunglasses. If I remove the so-called sunglasses, in fact the orange color cast, I would see this. Now let's do the opposite. We will add a few color casts to the image. An orange color cast. I would get this result. Let's add a light blue color cast. I would get this result. Finally, a green one. I would get this result. Once again, the three color casts. There are many reasons why it has a rather orange appearance. The main reason, I think, is a chemical reaction due to unstable elements during its manufacturing. The second reason might be a long confinement in an area like a safe. The air is stagnant, motionless. The third reason might be a long exposure in a very humid environment. The fourth reason is that it might have been in contact with an acid paper, like an envelope, or the cardboard surrounding the slide. Allow your slide to see the light of day from time to time. There is room for other explanations as well. With today's digital cameras, it's easy to avoid color casting with the auto white balance setting. Otherwise, if you take a picture inside a house, or building poorly lit, for example lit by an ordinary lamp, you should get an orange or a dark yellow color cast. Just make sure the auto white balance is activated and you'll get a pure white. If you take a picture outside when the sunlight is very intense, you might get a blue color cast unless you activate the auto white balance. Therefore, white area or elements in your photo won't have a bluish white aspect. The RGB color mode. Your screen is always lit by three primary colors the red, the green, and the blue. If red is mixed with green, you can see the yellow color. Blue with green, you get cyan. Blue with red, you get magenta. If we mix them all together, we get the white color or the gray color, depending on the intensity of these three primary colors. If we change the intensity of this or that color, we can get thousands of colors. Your screen can do that tens of times per second. When you have too much of something, you have not enough of something else. To show you what's wrong, I'm opening the histogram. Here I click on the old slide. In our case, it's too much red. You see here, red only. On the left, there's nothing, no red at all. Let's click on the improved photo. You can see that it's much better than the other one. We have the red color here, 
and here there's all kind of colors which is much better let's go back to the old photo to see once again this excessive amount of red On this whole slide, I have previously found the color cast to be rather brownish orange. The solution in this case is to find its complementary color. On this color wheel, we have the color cast, which is near this arrow. And diametrically opposed to it, the complementary color. So these two colors are complementary to each other. You must use the invert command in Photoshop Elements to find them. Here's how. I first open a brownish image. I take Filter, Adjustments, and Invert. And I get this blue complementary color. Now let's do the opposite. To come back to the original brownish orange color. Let's do the same with a light green image. Once again I take Filter, Adjustments, and Invert. I get a dark violet, which is its complementary color. I now go back to the original light green color. Always with the same Invert command. First thing to do is to make a duplicate of the layer. So I take layer, duplicate layer, and I give a name. Let's say copy. And I hit OK to confirm. We can see here the duplicate over the original layer. The next step is to invert the layer. So I take filter, adjustment, and invert. Next, the average filter. So I take Filter, Blur, and Average. This light blue is the complementary color. In other words, what's missing to get a good color balance. Next, I will change the way this blue layer interacts with the one below. Simply by changing its blending mode. Here we have the normal blending mode. You can try a few blending modes, such as the Color Dodge, the Overlay, and the vivid light mode. Let's take the vivid light mode. Magic, isn't it? You can also play with the opacity slider. Right here. Now it's time to merge those two layers down. So I take layer and merge down. To get an overall good balance in this photo, I have to change the levels. So I take Enhance, Adjust Lighting, and Levels. Here we have the three primary colors, RGB. I choose Red to reduce the amount of red. I move to the left. Not too much. I go back to the right. That looks better. And I hit OK to confirm this modification. Once again I change the levels, but this time with all three primary colors at the same time. So I take Enhance, Adjust Lighting and Levels. I click on the gray slider and I drag it around to see how it goes. I go back to the right. OK, it looks good. I hit OK. Once more, I'll do the same thing with the gray slider. Enhance, adjust lighting, and levels.
I go back to the right. That looks pretty good. I just hit OK. Between those two columns, the green color is not dark enough. So I'll zoom in a bit to modify it. I take the color picker to get a sample. I click here. Look at this square. It's not black, but a really dark green. Next I will use the replace color command. I take enhance, adjust color, and replace color. In this window, the white areas are used to detect the dark green color inside this photo. By moving around the slider, I can change the sensitivity, or if you prefer the tolerance. Around here, the white color is in fact the green color being detected. So I drag around the slider to brighten or darken the green areas. OK, that looks good. I hit OK. To see everything, I click on the hand tool. Once again, I improve the image with the levels command. So I take enhance, adjust lighting, and levels. Not too bright, though. OK, that looks good. I click OK. That's it. To see what I've done step by step, I click on the History tab. I made a duplicate, inverted the colors, used the average filter, changed the blending mode, merged layers together, played with the levels three times, rearrange or replace the dark green color so it looks better. So before and after. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you in my next tutorial. Bye.